in the next two classes uh, we discuss uh, two types of uh, step potential energies as part of one dimensional problems so in the first case uh, let me consider the situation where uh, total energy of the particle is less than the height of the potential step So the potential energy if we draw it is like this. This is a uh, x equal to zero. So along the y-axis I am drawing the potential energy let us say d of x. Okay. Um, for this region, let me call this region one. In this region that is x less than zero, potential energy is zero. Okay. At x equal to zero, potential energy increases. The say it becomes uh, the value of uh, potential energy. Is, let us say u here. Okay. So at x equal to zero and x greater than zero, potential energy is u. So this is a potential step. Okay. Uh, we can write it like this: potential energy is equal to zero. For x less than zero, equal to u. For x greater than or equal to zero, that is the potential energy. Okay. Now a beam of particles are coming. So I will draw a single representative particle in this beam. So actually a beam of particles are coming from region one, and this is region two, and uh, they are incident on this uh, potential uh, step at x equal to zero. And uh, the total energy of the particles is greater than the height of the uh, potential step. So, uh, if this is a classical situation, if this is a, uh, this is a, a classical system, okay, then if the total energy of the particles is greater than the height of the potential step, um, then uh, all the particles will uh, pass through this potential step. They can overcome this potential step and they can pass through it. Um, for example, you consider um, a discharge tube situation, discharge tube apparatus, a beam of electrons from an electron gun are moving towards uh, anode, from cathode to anode. Suppose uh, a grid is uh, given in between and uh, at the grid voltage, we apply a negative voltage here. Suppose the kinetic energy of the incident particles, uh, the beam, uh, the incident beam of electrons is uh, 10 electron volt and uh, we apply some uh, 5 volt poten negative pot potential here okay so um, the the negative potential will try to repel the electrons but the kinetic energy of the electrons is 10 electron volt potential energy is only 5 electron volt so these electrons will pass through the grid and uh, move towards the anode okay that is a classical situation where the, the de Broglie wavelength of the electrons is uh, much less than the dimension of the uh, discharge tube. So we can um, approximate this as a classical system. But if it is a, if the quantum effects are measurable, okay, um, <clears throat> if the dimension of this uh, region is comparable to the de Broglie wavelength of the particle uh, particles, then uh, then. Uh, we will see that uh, these particles um, can, um, some of these particles will be transmitted to region 2, but some of these particles will be reflected also. Okay, there will be, there will be, some of them will be reflected also. As an, an, an analogy, we can consider the situation when light is incident, uh, light is incident on a, on a surface, okay, a semi-transparent surface. So, if, whatever be the surface, uh, when light is incident on a surface, some of the light will be transmitted and some of the light will be reflected. Okay, uh, light or a photon is a quantum particle. So, this partial transmission and partial reflection is a uh, quantum behavior. Okay. So, uh, let us try to, so we want to calculate, our aim is to calculate what is the transmission probability and what is the reflection probability. Okay. So for this, uh, we will write down uh, Schrodinger equation for region 1 and find its solutions. Schrodinger equation for region 2, find its solutions. 
and uh, these uh, so we get wave functions in region 1 okay there will be particles in region 1 and wave functions in region 2 and uh, these wave this wave function in region 1 and wave function in region 2 these wave functions should uh, satisfy some continuity conditions at the boundary some admissibility conditions at the boundary uh, that means basically we are checking the continuity of the wave function and uh, its first derivatives. Okay, we know that according to one admissibility condition, wave function should be continuous uh, at all regions and uh, according to another bound, uh, admissibility condition, the first derivative of the wave function, the first uh, derivative with respect to position. Uh, those in this case, in one dimensional situation, it is dou psi by dou x. That uh, dou psi by dou x or d psi by dx should be uh, continuous across the boundary. So, we will use that continuity condition which we can also call boundary conditions because we apply these continuity conditions at the boundary between the two regions. And uh, using these uh, continuity conditions, so we can try to obtain an expression for reflection coefficient and transmission coefficient. This is what we are going to do. So, let us start with uh, region 1. So, what is the Schrodinger equation in region 1? Okay, here um, both uh, here and here, so here potential energy is zero, here potential energy is a finite value. So we don't we, we need to use only time independent Schrodinger equation. Okay, that because the time dependent part is now fixed in, in such situations. So um, what is the time dependent independent Schrodinger equation? D square uh, phi by dx square plus 2m by x cross square e minus v phi equal to 0. This is the general uh, time independent Schrodinger equation. And since it is in um, region 1, okay, so I can put uh, d square by dx square of phi 1 plus 2m by x cross square. What is the potential energy in region 1? 0. So we have 2m e by x cross square phi 1 equal to so, okay. Now I will put this 2m e by h cross square. So let k1 square equals 2m e by h cross square. Okay. From the previous discussion on um, particle in a box problem, we know that this has the dimension of k1 has the dimension of wave number and uh, h cross k1 is momentum okay so i will put substitute this here so we have d square by dx square phi 1 plus k1 square phi 1 equal to 0 now this is a simple harmonic uh, motion type equation right its solution can be either sine function or cos function or a combination of both or we can also write the solution in terms of e raised to exponentials that is, that is a um, harmonic uh, complex exponentials right? like e raised to i k 1 x um, or e raised to i minus i k 1 x or a combination of both. So uh, in this particular problem it is more convenient to use uh, this complex exponential format. So I will write the solution as uh, right here phi 1 equals some constant a e raised to i k 1 x plus b e raised to minus i k 1 x. Okay. E raised, we know we can see you can check e raised to i k 1 x is a solution of this uh, equation, e raised to minus i k 1 x is also a solution of this equation. Okay, uh, you can check that. And uh, so a linear combination of both is a general solution of this equation. Let's call it equation 1. Now, uh, what is the physical uh, meaning of uh, these solutions? We know that these are solutions of time independent Schrodinger equation, right? The total solution is um, obtained when you uh, multiply the spatial dependent part. This, is, this depends only on spatial variable x. You have to multiply it with the time dependent part of the solution. What is the time dependent part of the solution? We know from um, separation of variables in time dependent Schrodinger equation, the time independent part will be, time dependent part will be uh, like this e raised to minus i 
e t by x cross uh, now for e by x cross i can put omega so this is e raised to minus i omega t this is the time dependent part now when you multiply this uh, each of the space dependent part uh, with this time dependent part we get the uh, complete uh, um, the, the solution that is uh, psi 1 x comma t is equal to multiply each part with this time dependent part okay the time dependent part also can have a constant but that constant we can uh, combine with the, these constants a and b in each case when you multiply in each case so that's okay uh, so then what when you multiply this with the time dependent part what you get a e raised to i the first term will be uh, k1x minus omega t plus second term b uh, i can take minus i outside so minus i k1x plus omega t correct uh, see a e raised to i k1x into e raised to minus i omega t similarly here e raised to minus i k1x into e raised to minus i omega t so uh, in both case we are multiplying with e raised to minus i omega t so this is the complete solution now when you look at this complete solution you can see that the first part uh, the phase is k1x minus omega t. It indicates that this represents, represents a wave traveling in the plus x direction. We are talking about the wave function in region 1. So this wave function has two parts. One part is the wave traveling in the plus x direction. Look at this. Uh, the phase is uh, k1x plus omega t. That represents a wave traveling in the minus x direction. So this is a uh, wave traveling in the plus x direction, this is a wave traveling in the minus x direction in region 1. Okay, so what is the wave traveling in the plus x direction? That is uh, the incident wave. What is the wave traveling in the minus x direction? That is the reflected wave. Okay, so um, in, in anticipation of this uh, <coughs> uh, result, that is when you multiply the time dependent part, uh, this part gives the wave traveling in the plus x direction and this part gives the wave traveling in the minus x direction we can look at this and uh, we can um, we can label them as uh, i will label this as phi 1 plus indicating that it's a wave in region 1 traveling in the plus x direction and this is phi 1 minus wave in region 1 wave function in region 1 traveling in the and the wave is traveling in the minus x so this is the incident wave and this is the reflected wave okay, so these are the essential uh, results that we have obtained from uh, the wave function in region 1 k1 square is 2m e by x cross square and phi1 is this and remember that phi1 plus is the incident wave and uh, this is the reflected wave in region 1 and earlier I have uh, made a mistake here, I, even though I talked about uh, case 1 as the uh, energy, total energy of the incident wave is, or incident beam of particles is greater than the height of the potential barrier, I had used the uh, less than symbol here, I, I, had, I, have, I have corrected it now. So now let us consider region 2. As before, let us write the Schrodinger equation. So we have d square by dx square. I will directly write uh, phi 2. Okay. Plus 2m by x cross square e minus v. But v is equal to u in region 2. So e minus u I can put phi 2 equals 0. Now let me put uh, this 2m by x cross square e minus u as k2 square. So let us k2 square equals 2m by x cross square e minus u. Remember e, e is greater than u, so e minus u is a positive quantity, so k2 square is a uh, positive constant. Okay. Uh, so, so this is the k2 we can interpret as the wave number in region 2. Okay, now this we get d square by dx square phi 2 plus k2 square phi 2 equal to 0. Again, this is simple harmonic motion type equation. So, the solution in complex exponentials I can write as phi 2 x is equal to uh, constants a and b I have used for region 1. So, I can write c e raised to i k 2 x plus d e raised to minus i k 2 x. Okay. 
So, uh, from the earlier discussion, we know that this must represent a wave traveling in the plus x direction and this must represent a wave traveling in the minus x direction when the time dependent part is added to it. But when you look at region 2, there is no barrier in region 2. Okay, there is no force, there is no potential change or force here which can reflect the particles in region 2. There is no potential barrier here. Therefore, uh, there is no reflect, there can be no reflected wave, uh, there can be no wave traveling in the minus x direction in region 2. That means we can neglect this. Okay. Even though mathematically this part and this part and the linear combination can be solution of uh, uh, this equation, physically this part has no meaning. So we can, uh, by in physical grounds we can uh, neglect it. So uh, no reflected wave in region 2. Okay. So, based on that, let us rewrite uh, phi 2 as simply C e raised to i k 2 x. Okay. So, this is the wave function in region 2. So, we have a uh, two wave functions in region 1, I an incident wave and a reflected wave. Okay. And uh, only one wave function in region 2, um, we can say it is simply phi 2 plus. Okay, wave function in region 2 traveling in the plus x direction. So, we can call it transmitted wave. I will call it here. So, this phi 2 plus x is uh, c e raised to i k 2 x. This is the transmitted wave. So, this is the incident wave, this is the reflected wave and this is the transmitted wave. Now, let us consider, <coughs> let us take this uh, incident wave. Okay. Uh, what is the this quantity mod phi 1 plus square that is phi 1 plus star phi 1 plus uh, it's modulus square we know that uh, if uh, it's a normalized wave function this um, let's assume that a is the normalization constant and we find it out so this uh, uh, this phi mod phi 1 square is the probability density um, of the particles in region 1 okay so this is the probability density of particles in region 1. Probability density in one dimensional case means probability per unit length. Okay. So this is uh, probability density. And uh, uh, okay, from here we know that uh, when you take mod phi 1 square, what you get is uh, phi 1 star phi 1. So, this is a star e raised to minus i k 1 x into uh, phi 1 is a e raised to i k 1 x. So, that exponential part will cancel. So, what you get is uh, this is equal to I can say mod a square. Okay. So, mod phi 1 plus square equal to mod a square is probability density. Now we can say that this probability density is proportional to number density of particles. number density see if there are more and here number density again means number of particles per unit length in one dimensional case so if there are more particles reaching uh, moving in region 1 or more incident particles then the probability density is more so in that sense probability density is proportional to number density of particles so this quantity um, this mod phi 1 plus square or that mod a square is proportional to number density of incident particles we can say number density of incident particles okay now suppose i multiply this uh, phi 1 plus square with velocity of the velocity of particles in region 1 then that means uh, mod a square times v1 okay See, number density of incident particles means number of particles per unit length and uh, velocity is distance by time. Okay, so number of particles per unit length into distance by time. So, what you get is uh, number of this quantity is number of particles per unit time. So, this can be called, uh, let me say this is proportional to intensity. Intensity of incident particles.
number of particles per unit length into length by pi okay so that uh, what you get is a number of particles per unit time so number of part in one dimensional case number of particles per unit time can be called intensity of the incident particles so this is the incident uh, particle intensity in the same way um, this uh, phi 1 minus square times d1 if you take this part of the wave function reflected wave function and uh, take mod square again if you take mod square what you get is mod b square this part will cancel okay when you take uh, phi 1 minus star phi 1 that uh, e raised to minus i k 1x into its complex conjugate will cancel so this is simply mod b square times v1 this is proper proportional to intensity of reflected particles okay now we can take uh, this wave function that is uh, phi 2 plus square that is the wave function in region 2 so multiply with the velocity of particles in region 2 so we can say assume that uh, uh, velocity of particles in region 1 can be different from velocity of particles in region 2 because their kinetic energy can be different so into v2 is equal to what is mod phi 2 square again exponential part will cancel when you take complex conjugate so we get mod c square times v2 this is proportional to intensity of transmitted particles okay so we have uh, obtained once you um, once you are able to once you are able to calculate uh, the wave functions from the wave functions we can calculate uh, intensity of the incident particles reflected particles and transmitted particles and uh, this proportionality will be the same okay because uh, this proportionality comes from here right probability density uh, is proportional to number density of incident particles so we can argue that uh, the way probability density depends upon number density of particles is the same for uh, incident wave reflected wave and transmitted wave so the proportionality constant is the same now let us define uh, reflection coefficient and transmission coefficient reflection coefficient we can define as uh, the the ratio of intensity of reflected particles uh, by intensity of incident particles okay so this quantity intensity of reflected particles divided by intensity of incident particles that can be called reflection coefficient in other words it is a fraction of reflected particles let us say 100 particles are incident per second and out of which uh, some uh, let us say 60 particles are uh, reflected per second so what is the fraction of reflected particles 60 out of 100 okay reflected intensity by incident intensity so uh, we can define reflection coefficient this is the reflected intensity uh, b square v1 divided by a square v1 so the v1 will cancel so what you get is uh, mod b square divided by mod a square this is reflection coefficient it's a fraction of uh, it's a ratio of incident uh, reflected intensity by incident intensity uh, since uh, in this ratio proportionality constant will be the same that will cancel and uh, this uh, v1 will cancel okay so we get mod b square by mod a square similarly what is the uh, transmission coefficient it is the ratio of it's a fraction of transmitted particles out of 100 particles per second let us say 40 particles per second are transmitted then 40 by 100 is the transmission um, probability so this is a reflection probability and this is transmission probability okay so the, the, the transmission probability is uh, intensity of transmitted particles by intensity of reflected particles so this divided by this so what you get is mod c square v2 divided by mod a square v1 the two velocities are different okay okay so we have obtained an expression for reflection probability and uh, transmission probability also called reflection coefficient and transmission coefficient okay and uh, here we can further simplify this now i can uh, rewrite this uh, velocity part see uh, velocity we can write as momentum by mass and momentum is uh, h cross k divided by h cross k right so we, we can write this as h cross k divided by m 
so v2 is uh, h cross um, velocity in this region is h cross k2 divided by m and v1 is h cross k1 divided by m so h cross by m will cancel in the numerator and denominator so we have mod c square k2 divided by mod a square k1 okay now we will uh, what we have to do now is uh, from these uh, wave functions these two wave functions uh, we can find the relationship between these uh, coefficients d a also c and a okay then from that we can calculate this reflection uh, probability and transmission probability now in order to get the relationship between uh, these coefficients d and a and also between c and a let us apply boundary conditions there is only one boundary here between the two regions at x equal to 0 so uh, our conditions are this uh, at x equal to 0 okay the first boundary condition is that wave function in region 1 should be equal to wave function in region 2 because uh, we know uh, according to one admissibility condition wave function should be continuous everywhere so if it has to be continuous everywhere it has to be continuous at the boundary also why we are talking about the boundary is uh, it's a bound it's a boundary that uh, the, the potential can change so we have to ensure that uh, whatever wave function that we have obtained here whatever wave function we have obtained here they should match at the boundary okay so one boundary condition is that uh, this is essentially uh, continuity of the wave function so admissibility condition about the continuity of wave functions that phi 1 should be equal to phi 2 at x equal to 0. So if we apply this boundary condition, what do you get? Um, so what is phi 1 at x equal to? We have to take the entire wave function. What is phi 1 at x equal to 0? When you put x equal to 0, this is e raised to 0, 1, we get a, and this is e raised to 0 again, 1. So what you get is a plus b. Phi 1 at x equal to 0 is a plus b. What is phi 2 at x equal to 0? c. Exponential part will be 1. So a plus b equal to c. That is one condition and the next condition is that again at the boundary the, the first derivative of the wave function that is d, d phi 1 by dx should be equal to d phi 2 by dx. This is again another admissibility condition that uh, first derivative of the wave function should be continuous uh, in, in the region, uh, in all regions um, of the system. So we have uh, the con next condition is that d by dx of phi 1 should be equal to d by dx of so when you apply this boundary condition to the wave functions, what is d by dx of phi 1? Uh, we have to take the derivative i k1 a e raised to i k1x. Here we get minus i k1 b e raised to minus i k1x. When you put x equal to 0, that exponential part will be 1. So what you get is uh, i k1 a. Okay. Uh, uh, take the derivative and then put x equal to 0. So i k1 a times this exponential part will be e raised to 0 1. Here we have minus i k1 b. Okay. Equals. Uh, what is this? Uh, what is the derivative of this one? i k2 times c e e raised to i k2 x. Put x equal to 0. Then that exponential part will be 1. So we get i k2 c. Okay. We can simplify this. Uh, i will cancel throughout a1 I can take out, then what you get is a minus b equals k2 by k1 times c. Okay. Let us say this is some equation a, this is equation b. Now from equation a and equation b we can simplify and we can find uh, a and b in terms of c. Okay. For example, if we add the two equations, then uh, let's say small a plus small b. Okay. What do you get? If you add them, uh, then left hand side is 2a, right side is 1 plus k2 by k1 times c. Right? This is c, this is k2 by k1 times c, I can take c outside. Then from here we have a is equal to, okay. Uh, here we can take LCM, K1 plus K2 by K1. So we have A is equal to K1 plus K2 by 2K1 times C. Okay. Uh, similarly, you can take uh, A minus B. 
what you get a minus b uh, a will cancel uh, we get 2b equals a minus b so we have 1 minus k2 by k1 times c and from here b is equal to uh, k1 k1 minus k2 by 2k1 times c so we have obtained a and in terms of c k1 plus k2 by 2k1 times c b also we have obtained in terms of c k1 minus k2 by 2k1 times c let us uh, try to use this uh, in these two expressions so these are the values of uh, a and b that we have obtained in terms of c then what is the reflection probability reflection probability is mod b square by mod a square and b and a are real quantities so uh, just take the square of this one so when you take the square of this one mod b square square of this divided by square of this okay then uh, what you get is c square will cancel and uh, the result is k1 minus k2 whole square this denominator is the same so that also will cancel so we get k1 minus k2 whole square divided by k1 plus k2 whole square okay, this is the expression for reflection probability okay um, what about transmission probability so transmission probability is uh, mod c square k2 by mod a square k1 um, so I can write this as mod c square k2 divided by mod a square k1 uh, so what is mod a square we have k1 plus k2 by 2k1 whole square okay times mod c square and uh, then uh, k1 is also there in the denominator okay see mod c square k2 that i have written like that and uh, this mod a square i have written in terms of mod c square that is the uh, square of this one k1 plus k2 by 2k1 times uh, mod c square okay okay th there is a possibility that c can be complex so c, c is complex then a and b can be complex uh, only this part is real okay so we don't know about c anyway um, so uh, i am written this mode um, com complex for the possibility of c being complex so i am taking mod c square so k1 plus k2 by 2k1 square times mod c square that is mod a square times there is a k1 in the denominator that i have put here and c square will cancel Mm, then okay when you take the square of this one uh, k1 plus k2 whole square divided by 4 k1 square will be there one k1 also will cancel we can take this uh, so we have 4 k1 the denominator it can be taken to the numerator so what you get is finally 4 k1 k2 divided by k1 plus k2 whole square okay this is the um, transmission probability I will write here for k1 k2 divided by k1 plus k2 whole square uh, let us check that uh, what is the reflection probability plus transmission probability so what is r plus t uh, you can see that the numerator and denominator is the same k1 plus k2 whole square what is numerator k1 minus k2 whole square plus 4 k1 k2 we know that k1 minus k2 whole square plus 4 k1 k2 is k1 plus k2 whole square denominator is k1 plus k2 whole square so r plus t is 1 see if uh, 100 particles are incident per um, second well, the incident uh, intensity is 100 out of this some 60 particles per second are reflected and 40 particles per second are transmitted okay so the reflection uh, probability is 60 out of 100 transmission probability is 40 out of 100 if you add them the result should be 1 okay no particles are missing here so r plus t is 1 this uh, reflection and transmission probabilities we can uh, express in terms of energy uh, see this k1 and k2 are connected to energy okay so we can rewrite these reflection and transmission probabilities in terms of energy uh, reflection probability will be if you substitute for k so what is k1 square root of this one 2m by h cross square in the e k2 is square root of 2m by h cross square in the e minus e 
So when you substitute for k1 and k2, this uh, square root of 2m by h cross square will be there in the numerator in these two terms, in these two terms. So they will cancel. This uh, root of 2m by h cross square will cancel from all the terms. So what is remaining is uh, root e instead of, uh, at the position of k1 and k2 contains root e minus u. So root e minus u whole square divided by root e plus root e plus u whole square. This is reflection um, probability. Similarly, transmission probability will be 4 times <coughs> at the position of k1 you have root e. At the position of uh, k2 you have root e minus u. Denominator will be uh, root e plus root e minus u whole square. So this is uh, these, these are the expressions of reflection probability and transmission probability in terms of energy. Total energy of the E is the total energy of the incident particles and U is the height of the potential barrier. Okay. <clears throat> now we can, uh, from these expressions, we can gather some information about uh, how reflection and transmission probabilities vary with energy. Okay. In these uh, expressions, let us consider uh, situation E is uh, very much greater than U. Okay, we are considering the situation uh, energy total energy is greater than U, but suppose energy is very much greater than U. Uh, then <coughs> what happens to uh, reflection probability? If E energy is very much greater than U, this uh, root of E minus U is approximately root E. Then root, uh, numerator will be root E minus root E, so reflection probability tends to zero. <coughs> okay, so in this case, R tends to zero. The transmission probability should tend to 1. That means uh, all the particles, all the 100 particles per second should pass through uh, to reach N2 as energy increases. Okay. That's uh, classically, we can expect that. Uh, see, classically, uh, if energy is greater than potential energy barrier, uh, height, then all the particles will get transmitted. It's a quantum behavior that part, uh, there is a part, partly reflection is there. But if energy is very high, Okay, we can say that uh, we can go to the classical region, it's a approximately classical situation, then um, most of the, all the particles will be transmitted. But transmission probability should tend to 1, if reflection probability tends to 1. So let us see, if uh, energy is very much greater than u, uh, this u you can neglect, so we have numerator root e times root e, we have 4 times e. In the denominator, this term also root e. So, uh, root e plus root t will be 2 root t. When you take the square, we get 4 times c. So, 4 times c divided by 4 times c, we get transmission probability 10 to 0 in this condition. So, when energy is very much greater than in, in, in this type of a case, when energy is very much greater than height of the potential barrier, reflection, there is no reflection, all the particles will be transmitted. Transmission probability, sorry, this is 1. Transmission probability is 1. Okay. <clears throat> now let us consider a situation when energy is exactly equal to um, yeah, energy is exactly equal to u. Okay. Then what happens? When E is exactly equal to u, uh, immediately you can see that here, when E is exactly equal to u, the numerator of uh, transmission probability is 0. And uh, here, when E is exactly equal to U, this term will be 0, this, uh, okay, this term will be, yeah, this term will be 0, uh, then we have, um, okay, here I have to put E minus U. I am sorry, there is an error here. K2 contains root E minus U, right? So, this is root E minus U. Uh, so, uh, this part will be 0, this part also will be 0. We have root E square in the numerator, root E square in the denominator. So, this is root E. Okay. So, the reflection probability will be 1. And as I have mentioned earlier, when E is exactly equal to U, transmission probability will be 0. Okay. So, note this correction, here uh, the denominator is root of e minus u, just like this one, the two denominators are the same. So, here 
what you get here is uh, reflection uh, um, probability is exactly one transmission probability is zero at e equal to u. Now let us consider a situation. Uh, let's find out when uh, reflection probability and transmission probability are equal. Okay. For that you can equate this and this and you can work out. Uh, I am not doing that uh, algebra. You can do that. It's very easy. What you will see is that then energy is equal to uh, you will get a quadratic equation in energy and you will get two roots. Energy is equal to u by 2 times 1 plus or minus square root of 9 by 8. You will get an equation like this. And we can see that the square root of 9 by 8 is slightly greater than 1. Okay. So when you put the negative sign, these are the two roots of the quadratic equation in energy. Uh, so if you put minus 1, what you get is 1 minus a quantity greater than 1. Then total energy will be negative. But uh, even though mathematically it is possible, but physically that situation is... Uh, is, act, is not acceptable here because if total energy is negative then it's a bound system but uh, by construction this is an unbound system a beam of particles are coming they are reflected they are transmitted so there is no bound system here so total energy cannot be negative okay so and total energy is greater than u also here okay it cannot be negative um, therefore um, we need to accept only the plus case so when you put the plus here uh, what you get is E is equal to, uh, we can work out this, uh, see, you can see that uh, since 9 uh, or nine by 8 is approximately 1, what the term in the bracket will be approximately 2 and 2, 2, two and 2 will cancel, we get uh, E is equal to U, slightly greater than U. If you do exact calculation, what you can see that E is equal to 1.03 times U. Okay, so when energy is equal to u, reflection probability is 1 and transmission probability is 0. But when energy is only slightly greater than u, 1.03 times u, then reflection and transmission probabilities are equal. Equal means, uh, uh, what, what is the value? Uh, always remember that uh, r plus t should be 1. So if they are equal, r plus t is equal to 0.5. Both are, uh, are, are, this is equal to 0.5 at this energy. You can substitute this energy in these two expressions and you can see that it is uh, approximately 0.5. Okay, so this is the behavior of reflection and transmission coefficients with energy. Uh, when energy is very much greater than u, um, no particles are reflected, all the particles are transmitted. Uh, when energy is exactly equal to u, all the particles are reflected, no particles are transmitted. But when energy is slightly greater than u, 1.03 times u, then um, half the part, exactly half the particles are reflected, half the particles are transmitted. That's the meaning of this. If 100 particles per second are incident, 50 particles per second are reflected and 50 are transmitted. Uh, let's try to uh, plot these wave functions, uh, phi1 and phi2, across this uh, potential barrier. So, um, by convention, let me try to plot the wave functions in the, uh, superimpose the wave functions in the, in the graph of the potential, um, okay, step. So, uh, let us see. So, this is our potential step. Okay. U. Okay. Now, the wave function, uh, the energy of the particles is uh, greater than U. So, let me take the energy here. This is E. E is greater than U. Um, so, in region 1, this is region 1 and this is region 2. In region 1, uh, see that uh, this is the total energy and this total energy is equal to kinetic energy of the particles. Okay. In region 2, uh, this much is the potential energy. Okay. Then, um, this is the, um, what is this? This must be um, total energy minus U, which is kinetic energy. So, in region 1, the entire energy of the particles is uh, kinetic energy, whereas in region 2, um, kinetic energy is less. Okay. So, <clears throat> we can say that uh, in region 1, kinetic energy is greater. If kinetic energy is greater, momentum will be greater. If momentum is greater, the wavelength will be less. In region 2, kinetic energy is less, momentum is less, so wavelength will be more. So, this much we can guess about uh, these uh, wave functions. Here, the, uh, in both, for the, both the incident wave and the reflected wave, the wavelength will be less. Um, 
because momentum is more and kinetic energy is more and uh, in region 2 the wavelength will be greater because momentum and kinetic energy are less so we can plot it like this okay phi 1 should be equal to phi 2 here and the, uh, the um, uh, derivative also should match uh, okay we can also guess that uh, the amplitude will be less uh, because um, uh, only part of the incident wave is uh, transmitted okay uh, amplitude square is proportional to number density of the particle so uh, amplitude will be less and uh, wavelength is greater so it is like this okay so the plot is like this uh, here uh, when, when you come from region 1 to region 2, two things happen. One is uh, since only part of the wave is transmitted, amplitude will be less. Secondly, uh, the wavelength increases. Okay. So, this is the uh, discussion on um, a beam of particles incident on a step potential with total energy of the incident particles greater than height of the potential barrier.